Hi everyone, welcome to my plot in the middle of July. It is gorgeous, a gorgeous evening here. And um, we've had a warm, warm day. Let's, let's put it that way. Unfortunately, my daughter was ill, home ill with um, a vomiting bug, TMI, but um, I wasn't able to go out at all, even though I was home. But uh, yeah, she's on the mend, so hopefully, um, unless I get stricken with the same bug this weekend, we have a lovely few days ahead of us now, I think. Time to get those last things planted in the ground. I'm still behind and it's getting very late for some things now, but I'm optimistic and um, the things I have got in the ground are doing really well. So let's have a look around. At first I thought we would just admire the lavender hedge. So I've got it growing at the front. Oh, here's the kitty cat. I've got it growing at the front of my plot. And um, I grew it from those little plug plants you can buy for fairly cheap and just pay for postage. And, and that was in 2018 and here we are. Hello kitty. This is my neighbor's cat. Meow. Myrtle, she spends her time here now. I think this is her territory. It used to be my cat's territory, but uh, now it's Myrtle's. Oh well. But yes, so um, let's have a look over here first. So the um, potatoes are slowly coming up. I'm harvesting the Charlottes, the second earlies, and um, they're doing okay. I haven't harvested the ones in a container yet, but the ones in the ground have been fine. Um, and super tasty Charlotte definitely is one to grow, I think. But again, the slugs have been, even now that it's dried up a bit, the slugs are all over my potato plants. I've never seen it this bad on potatoes, on tomatoes, on my asparagus. Um, and then also on all the usual things like the beans and the sunflowers and you know everything else but I've just never seen them devour potato plants <laughs> um, The ones in the ground are, are better but the ones in the container are There's just no leaves yet left So that's the all the main crop and uh, these small ones here are the charlotte So I've got three plants left here to do And I've got my sweet corn and dwarf bean combo and they have survived, most of them. Some of them I've planted two beans in the same position. Um, dwarf beans, that's totally fine. It might just make picking a little bit harder, but it is a good use of space, though I'm not so sure being this close to sweet corn is a good idea, but we'll see how we get on. But why I came up here was for the squash. So they have bulked up quite a lot. And these are, this is the giant pumpkin, so it is starting to, um, yeah, uh, it's on the move, uh, which is good to see, and it is flowering, but you can see here the slugs are on the flowers, even before they're opened, um, which isn't great. Hopefully they'll, there'll be a break at some point and we'll get some <laughs> pollination. So one of the most common questions that people sent me this time of year, apart from slugs, how to deal with slugs, is squash, cucumber, um, melon, and I guess loofah as well, um, the pollination of, and why, why fruit seem to be forming and then just yellowing and dropping off. So it's very, it's very straightforward really. So most of these plants require a male and a female flower. And we'll have a look at some of those in a bit and um, they need to pollinate each other, right? The male and the female bits. You can try to do the pollination yourself, but usually it's fine. Uh, usually the plants, depending a little bit on the weather, usually the plants will produce male flowers first and a lot of them before even the first female has opened. And um, you just have to be patient at that point. The female flowers will arrive as soon as the weather is favorable. The plant knows this and the know, knows what the best conditions is for it to bear fruit. <laughs> uh, and um, 
it could also be that you have these female plants they have opened up and you have had male plants at the same time but still the fruit might grow a little bit but then go yellow and drop off and that is most likely because either it hasn't been pollinated or there's been a change in the weather um, and they just haven't been able to it, they think it's too cold or there's been um, too much of a wind or maybe even not enough water or um, the ground isn't fertile enough you know so conditions need to be right for these kind of plants to form fruit that's why they're considered heavy feeders they're not really they just want good growing conditions like all plants right but let's have a look at what um, the flowers look like what to look out for so on this one this is a winter squash right and this has been an open male flower today you can see it's a male flower because it has a long thin stem below the flower and this is an unopened one and on this one there doesn't appear to be any female flowers coming yet but I know there will be some over there so let's go have a look I have been out here most nights and on some of the squash there are like massive slugs every night same same squash and on another squash there's just never any slugs I just don't know how they choose which ones to go for it's a little bit it's a little bit funny isn't it well let's have a look then the hair is a crown prince winter squash and it's really going for it now and you can see here a female fruit and you can also see some slug slime on this one this is a male flower and this is a female flower yeah sorry female flower not female fruit obviously <laughs> uh, this one's been open today so it might have been pollinated by one of the males on the other plants it doesn't they are very promiscuous these kind of plants and they will gladly cross pollinate even with cucumbers or melons i'm not 100 percent sure about that but uh, it is possible and definitely within the family within sweet uh, sorry summer squash and winter squash and so on so let's just it's bloody plains always anyway crown prince f1 has been bred for setting fruit early and growing well in the uk climate so it's not surprising to me that this is one of the first ones to set fruit so i planted mine very late sowed in late and planted them late so i'm probably behind many other people but i'm not you know i'm not guaranteeing you or i'm not uh, i'm not having high hopes that this fruit will actually become one that stays the whole for the duration and it's quite interesting you don't have to trim fruit off one of these plants it's best just to leave it get on with it it will carry as many fruit as it feels it can so last year was a not a great squash year at least here and almost 100% of my winter squash plants only carried one fruit these are the the large the the, the uh, smaller winter squash had more than one fruit but most of the large ones only carried one fruit the blue banana the gallows designier then i had crown prince yeah sorry my crown prince were very interesting I had two plants one was growing where i had mulched with bought compost and one of them was growing where i've mulched with homemade compost and everyone knows homemade compost is it's the shit if you can get it if you can if when, if when you have it you all you all should be making your own homemade compost but the stuff you've got you should dole it out with some intention right so one of the the one squash plant that grew in the homemade compost had so many probably probably seven fruits that started growing the vine was massive and I was like wow I was very very surprised but in the end I had three large fruit on that one and this was in a bad squash year so I can just imagine I could have probably got seven if uh, if it had been a better summer the other one had like it was the the vine was maybe like a fifth of the size plus it had one small fruit it was very small they almost it, it did mature as in turn uh, to the mature color 
but yeah, it was um, such a huge difference. So the plant will decide how many fruits it thinks that it can support that year and that's as many fruits as you're gonna get. So you don't need to worry about um, removing any excess fruit. Uh, it will do that itself. Just give it the time. So as I was saying, last year was not a great squash year. And by that, I mean that the weather wasn't very good here. And uh, a lot of the fruit, sorry, a lot of the female flowers opened on a bad weather days or they were, they just opened that morning and then there was a heavy shower. So the whole cup of the, of the flower was full of water. And it was just, you know, you just know that that's not going to be pollinated. Um, so then I took it into my own hands and I did a few hand pollination um, where I pollinated. I removed a male flower from a surrounding plant or that plant. I peeled back the, the flower uh, petals and then I went in there, you know. And uh, I, th I th it could it could have been what swung it, and I got I got a fruit on each plant, but um, usually it does sort itself out. So as you can see, I've still got uh, a fair amount of beans still to plant out. Um, but yes, one of the sunflowers is almost open, almost open. It's exciting. They are gorgeous things. beautiful so I think it will look great this little planter here um, and I'm amazed that the slugs just haven't gone for them completely but yes I wanted to go in here and have a look at the melons you see oh I just walked through a lot of spider web there with my foot it's uh, now covered lovely but yes so the squash family the cucumbers include melons so they're very very similar and uh, work in exactly the same way, only on a much smaller scale. So let's have a look at the one that's flowering in here. So I've got a few melon plants, right? This is the one that's furthest along. And um, there was one I showed you last week. Where is it now? Um, is it here? Oh yes, there's this one. So you see, that one is going yellow. This is a female fruit. Sorry, female was a female flower and with a fruit body at the end. And I think that's not been pollinated because it looks more yellow than the leaf. So we'll see what happens. Uh, there are lots more. There's one right here. And there's actually one flowering right now, just here. So it might have been pollinated already, but I thought we could do some hand pollination. So I've got... Um, male flower here and i think there might be one here as well so by looks of these melons the female flowers come off these shoots of the main stem while the male flowers seem to be flowering here along the main stem so that's interesting something i would never really noticed before but yes let's um let's pick this male flower and uh Let's have a go. Oh, there's already someone in there. Sorry. Right, so, oh, look at that. Eee. Aubergine. Right, so, this is much easier with the squash because their, their flowers are so much bigger. Um, but you basically want to reveal the pollen. Oh. Like that. Yeah, so here we are. We have the little male. I mean, it's absolutely tiny, isn't it? Right, let's see if we can uh, get the business done. This is going to be very interesting one handed. Um, you know, it's probably completely unnecessary to do this because there's plenty of um, pollinators in here. But just, I'll just show you <laughs> if I can do this. Okay, right, I should have got the tripod instead. <laughs> anyway, you just, just shove it in there and twist it about. <laughs> um, again, it's so much easier on the squash because this is just so small. Right, hopefully that will have done something. 
and we'll get a melon off that one. So this is your reminder to like this video if you appreciate what I'm doing as a YouTuber. And uh, yeah, it just helps this video spread to more people. So thanks for that. But yes, yeah, so I could have got a male flower off my other melons to do that if I wanted to. I would have then obviously crossed the genetics of one variety with another. And this happens very easily, just naturally uh, with the pollinators. You know, they carry pollen from one plant to the next. And this is why it is quite tricky to save seeds from this group because it's not tricky to save the seeds, but it's tricky to get a true variety uh, or a, a true um, offspring of the one you grew. It will might be a mix. It might be an, an inedible mix of whatever combination it will be. So the way to do it, uh, if you want to save the seeds from the squash or from the melon, is to watch your female flowers carefully. And you will learn to see when it is about to open the next day. So usually if you go and check on them in the evening, you can usually tell that they will open sometime uh, during the night or in the morning, next morning. So if you, if you tie that together with a little bit of string or a rubber band is quite good on the squash at least, and it stays closed, all right? It won't snap open, meaning that there won't be someone else in there pollinating it before you get there. And then in that morning, you get a fresh male flower. The next morning you check uh, for a fresh male flower and then you do the pollinating uh, and after you've pollinated it you have to close it again right and hopefully then that will be what exactly what you want I have not actually tried this myself for me um, I still have so many seeds maybe when I start running out of my favorites uh, I'll have to start doing that but um, then we come to F1 varieties and Crown Prince, everyone's favorite is an F1 variety and that one won't stay true. Even if you self pollinate it, even if you pollinate yourself, the offspring of that won't be a Crown Prince. You can get lucky and you can get a really nice uh, squash from it, um, but they take up so much space and growing um you know you need to water you need to feed it all that sort of stuff so is it worth growing something that might end up being inedible it's probably better just to get the appropriate seeds so yes this is the watermelon still haven't seen any female fruit on that one it's still very small to me and this one in the corner there this one's doing quite well and then these three here are doing the best so i go around and i twist it up over the support around the support the string support and uh, it's growing fairly quick now actually so it seems to be liking this position here it might be warmer against this black box in the back i'm not so sure and uh, while we're in here just have a look at the other bits so i i was just looking at my aubergine plants and they are very small they are bearing fruit but the plants are very small and I don't know if um, if this is normal and now that it's heating up they will grow really fast because I haven't grown them in the ground before I've only grown them in containers and that does keep them small I know that um, so I'm hoping this is just the start of it and they will soon have a little growth spurt and um, we'll see some amazing stuff going on here but yeah so there are some beautiful fruit coming and now it's just a tricky bit of knowing when to harvest them because some of the fruit are really small you can be tricked into thinking that they're not ready but i think they might be so first we have this this is the check early and i am not 100 sure it's growing that much more and um the Black Beauty has just had a flower open, I, so I hope that's been pollinated. And we have that pinstripe one that I showed you before. And then there's this 
uh, which I think is still growing. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a, aubergines are, you know, notoriously difficult to know when they're ready. But we have some red going on in here as well. This is the um, Chinese dragon tongue chili. And if you, oh, if you see discoloration like this on your chilies, don't be alarmed. This is what happens when they start changing color. So they go from green to red. And you know, going back to school, if you mix green and red color, you get brown, right? So that's what's going on. And it's the same with the lemon drop chilies. They go like black, like this, and then they turn bright yellow. So it is quite cool, uh, but it's a good sign. It means that something's happening. I need to actually probably pick this one. And with chilies, you need to keep picking them. With a lot of things, you need to pick the fruit uh, for it to start producing more. So as soon as this one is, well, it's probably fully ripe now. Come on, there we go. And also you could pick them um, when they're still a bit like this and just put them on your windowsill and they will go red very, very quick as well. There we go. And they're so gorgeous, aren't they? So I talked um, last vlog about my plan for my dahlias. I still haven't planted them out. I just haven't had the time, but I'm gonna grow them through the black mulch. I'm really keen on doing that now. And I might even trim them back a bit more once I plant them out and get them like going, you know, it's it's still early dahlia season. My uh, my one right here has just started flowering. So it is a one that I've inherited the um, tubers from my mom's best friend who's sadly now passed away. So I don't actually know the variety, but um, it's one of the singles and the bees really like them. So this is my third year growing it and I think this will be the best year yet. It's looking really, really healthy. But yeah, so this is the early start of the dahlia season and there's still plenty of time. So if you see some in the garden center, definitely buy them and plant them up and just keep them safe from slugs. The other thing that's like super bad this year uh, are earwigs. There's earwigs everywhere. So I was in the tomato greenhouse yesterday looking for slugs and I felt something. I was wearing my, my Birkenstocks like I always do. Um, sorry about that. And I felt something running across my foot. I looked down and it was a, an earwig, you know, the one with the pincers. So I, uh, I grew up in the countryside and I remember having them in my hair, like finding them in my hair in the morning and stuff like that. So I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that worried about them. I know they don't go in your ear and lay eggs <laughs> or whatever the... <laughs> what kids think but um i've just never seen so many of them and any insect uh, or creepy crawling when there's loads of them they kind of become a bit more menacing don't they but anyway they also eat your leaves so it's not only slugs if you see markings small markings on your on your leaves it might not be slugs it might be earwigs especially dahlias they love dahlias so i planted out some outdoor cucumbers uh, uh, very, very late, it's like everything. I just feel like I'm keeping saying that, keep saying that every time. Um, can we just have a little appreciation for my sweet peas? They're so good this year and look how tall they are. It's just amazing this year. I need to pick them again. And they, I, I picked them not that long ago. Uh, I think my favorite is this one, almost black. It goes so well with the whites and the high scent <laughs> here we go high scent i should just turn you around though of course we were talking about cucumbers but never mind look at the high scent beautiful and goes really well with almost black and we've also got ooh, a turquoise lagoon here this sort of like unicorn color that changes color um throughout its um life and just really 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 gorgeous i mean you can't you really can't get over it anyway back to the cucumbers so the cucumbers are growing here this was the plan all along um I'm missing a row of tomatoes i still haven't decided where to put them in yet because they are looking so bad i'm thinking should i waste the space for tomatoes but my outdoor cucumbers are in so that's la diva burpless tasty 
crystal lemon and then Burplastacea in Lediva again. So I'm thinking they will romp away now that they're in the ground and um, they will be climbing up these strings here. I will twist them around just like I do with the melons and um, I'll have to keep an eye on the side shoots because otherwise this will just become an absolute mess. So we'll see how we get on. I know this uh, method of growing it up string is quite a popular one uh, over Instagram and that now for tomatoes as well uh, as melons as I've done and now cucumbers. But the thing I found out last year is if, especially outside, I'd say, I'll preface that with saying outside, it is important to not use a decomposable string. So the method works in a way that secures the string underneath the root ball of the plant. So the root holds the plant in place and then you tie it to the, the, the support above, right? I'll show you. So the string you put into the planting hole before you put the plant in and then you you bury it, right? And then you twist it around the plant and you just keep going, right? So if you put ute string, like I did with my outdoor tomatoes last year, it, it, it will rot, like, because it's so wet. You will be watering this quite a lot, especially at the start. And if it rains a lot, it will decompose very quickly. It works fine in the air like this, for a season, right? It won't last beyond a season. So for this season, I bought some synthetic string. I also have, for my tomatoes, I have a, a hay bale string from my neighbor has a horse, right? That's also a very good use. But I bought this synthetic string to use in on these occasions. So what sits underneath the plant is the synthetic, and then I tie them together, and then the, the, the length of the string the majority of the string is the ute string so that way I can reduce the plastic use right and I will hopefully then be able to reuse this if I can find it and rescue it when I take the plants down because it, it, these plants do need support and doing the string method just really doesn't work <laughs> if it's not attached to the bottom yes you can tie it loosely to the bottom of the plant but it m works much better if it sits underneath the plant um, but yes, so you do need to have, you do need to have a string that doesn't just disappear. Wow, what an evening. It's just lovely. So I have um, one more area with squash, squash type plants, cucumbert family, and this is my my arch. So the sweet peas and the cucumbers are there, and over here is my arch. So I grew Uchiki Curry up it last year. And this year, this is where I've planted out the chocha, which is a new one for me, and it's growing really well, which is. So it's so scary though, like the <laughs> the stem is so small and thin and it carries this whole plant uh, and just you just need a little bit of a little slug here to go nibble at it uh, of an evening and it's all gone. Um, but yes, <laughs> and then on this side, I just planted out a cucamelon. So I'm not, I like cucamelons, right? But my first year growing them, I grew six plants way way too many plus it was 2018 when we had that great summer and they just loved it so i got way too many so i'm never doing that again last year i grew one plant and i got a f maybe f a few too few um but this year the germination was so poor i ended up with just one plant. i think two plants would have been better um but i have one so i've planted it here on the other side is a massive massive squash it's a serpent of sicily i wish really wish you could feel this because it's so so soft so soft um but yeah so this one's already climbing up by itself 
and it's gonna romp away very soon so I'm gonna have to support it a little bit you kind of when you grow squash vertically they do have the tendrils right that can twist around and hold themselves in place but it's not um, it's not if you want to if you want to grow them vertically where you want them to grow vertically then you should guide them in so when you tie them to your support you don't tie them tightly you just hold them until they grapple on and hold themselves there right so you don't have to tie them any you don't have to tie them in a vice or anything like that um, just make sure that they reach their tendrils where you want them to um but yeah so the serpent of sicily should hopefully then give me some straight they have those really really long obviously like a snake right they look like trombocino type style squashes and um by growing them up like this they can hang down from the arch and gravity will then make straight fruit compared to the other one i've got growing on the ground it will give me all sorts of weird shapes <laughs> so both will be interesting i think and now um i want to talk to you about christmas so christmas sprouts have gone in the ground and they take a long time to mature long time so i sowed them in may should have planted them out last month obviously uh, that didn't happen but they're planted now and i've planted them at 60 centimeter distance because they are huge plants once they get going they will be massive right now they're very tall small and uh at risk from slugs of course like everything else so next to the sweet peas and uh next to the arch here is one of my brassica beds then for winter and the sprouts are here i got five seedlings the rest are cabbages and they will grow massive like little like tall trees right and the main thing i need to protect them from on my plot is pigeons 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 all year round i just saw heard one fly right so they just live in all these trees here and um I see them on the plot when I come here early morning I see them fly away so mesh on and the mesh will also then help protect against um, the butterfly that lays its eggs and which larvae likes to eat brassicas and also it will help against aphids and it's quite nice I'm, I will need to upgrade the cage to proper like blue piping later on in the year when the plants are taller because I don't want the mesh to sit straight onto the plants through winter. I found that out the hard way that that can lead to water sitting on the plants and freeze thawing, freeze thawing and then that causes the plants to suffer <clears throat> and especially with things like broccoli because the broccoli head was the tallest thing the mesh was sitting on that and it ruined it ruined the crop it wasn't good so I need to upgrade later on in the year when the plants are taller um, but the one of the added benefits of mesh in winter is that it keeps the worst of the weather off so the worst of the if you have hail or the worst of the torrential rain or wind or uh, even s slight temperature increase under there so it is has a lot of benefits um, and I use mesh a lot hello kitty cat hello Mm -hmm. You think you own this place, don't you? Yeah, you do. Anyway, I was going to show you that <laughs> I've got flowering brassicas in here. So this is actually broccoli. Uh, it is a brassica um, that you eat the shoot off, but you obviously should do that before <laughs> they're flowering. But you can still eat them, so there's no problem. I see the other ones are flowering too. Seriously, things are getting away from me. Um, things are growing so fast now. And yeah, I've seen all the, bro the bro some of the broccoli shoots that I've missed. Um, and there's still a nice broccoli head here. I need to harvest before it goes off uh, and starts shooting up. But yes, otherwise, July, man. Ooh, it is just divine, isn't it? Yes, so I'm just going to pick some raspberries now for tomorrow's breakfast. Uh, summer fruiting raspberries lovely and uh, maybe one or two strawberries they have really stopped producing now hopefully they'll have a second flush soon if the weather 
gets a, a little bit better now. So I'm gonna leave you there and uh, I hope it was a fun vlog for you this week and that you um, found the whole uh, pollination thing of squash plants useful. <laughs> Let me know in the comments and uh, yeah, have a great weekend guys.